Hello, and thank you for electing to watch our presentation. I'm Megan Grady here with Brenda Johnston to talk to you about using podcasts to further student learning. So why might you choose to use podcasts in your curriculum? There's two ways that I like to think of the approach. One, obviously having students listen to podcasts related to your subject matter. A, it deepens their understanding of that subject matter and helps diversify the voices included in your class. Um, but also then brings in current issues and topics that maybe aren't researched and in print format, but are, are really important and relevant to the current moment. I'll say in the arts, there have been a lot of podcasts about how the arts are responding to the pandemic in the last year, and it's been great bringing those into all of my classes. But then in terms of having students actually create their own podcasts, helps develop important communication skills in transmedia formats and platforms, something that may be a new thing for them to do and then they can immediately add it to their resume. It also develops important skills, including project management and managing different kinds of technology. And then if you were to allow them or encourage them to maybe interview some leaders in the subject matter in their podcast, it can help expand their social and professional networks. And just to piggyback on what Brenda has said, um, this is more from just an academic technology specialist standpoint, uh, anecdotally from what I've learned, not only helping faculty with podcasts in their classes, but also assigning them in my own classes. What I like about podcasting is that one, it doesn't require fancy equipment or expensive software. A lot of people think that it does and therefore never get to know that there are free audio uh, recording and editing softwares available. My uh, particular software choice for that is Audacity, and I like it for a couple reasons. One, because it's free and open source, and two, uh, to put it in kind of annoying technology terms, it is operating system agnostic, which means that it can be used in Windows, it can be used in Mac, it can be used in Linux. So students who maybe don't have a Mac and access to GarageBand don't feel like they can't take part in the editing process for a podcast. Also, podcasting highlights and develops students' voices and creativity. I always love it the first time I'm around students and they're working in the sound booth or working with each other to do a recording and they listen to their recording and they kind of giggle and also light up uh, and laugh because it is fun to create something and to do it in a different modality than we're accustomed to doing in higher education. So there's like equal parts embarrassment, but also excitement there. And I really love that. Um, it also promotes participation, and I think this is especially true for students who are maybe reluctant to share their ideas in class, whether because they're shy or for fear that those ideas are undercooked and need just a little more cooking time before presented for taste tests to a broader audience. So what's nice about podcasting is there is some scripting that's involved, and in a collaborative context like Brenda's, students also are talking through their ideas with each other prior to recording the particular podcast. So there's an opportunity to polish those up. And then in post-production too, you can edit out any mistakes and edit to make sure you sound concise and clear and polished while also remaining mindful that the goal is not at all to sound like an automaton or to take from language what makes it sound natural or human um, or that gives it kind of that extemporaneous feel, that accessible feel that we've come to expect from podcasts. It also develops a new communication style. I have students who are avid you know, writers and they write all the time and they never thought about creating anything with audio who've gone on from my classes to create podcasts at their local bookstores or to do things of that nature. So it gives them just another avenue of creativity and to develop new and relevant skills. Um, during podcast training, we revisit some concepts they probably were first exposed to in FYS, things like copyright and creative commons, because they need to make sure they're finding appropriately licensed music and sound effects to integrate into their podcasts. And we also talk about once you've created a podcast, how do you make that podcast accessible to people who are deaf or hard of hearing? So these are really important skills that students need to understand and things that students need to think about and be sensitive to. And also, it's fun, especially when Brenda and I are involved. That's true. <laughs> so how did I come to the idea to A, involve podcasts in my curriculum, but B, really have the students create this project? So two years ago, I was teaching for the first time our leadership and artistic vision class. And I'm not going to read the, the course description to you there, but we are looking at different leadership styles and attributes and how do you lead from different positions within an organization. 
this year, especially I'm teaching again this spring, we're really looking at the current challenges facing our field and how to prepare for those leadership moments and to think about things in so many different perspectives. Uh, and so that's the class and what's been really great, again, bringing in current podcasts to help us have the current conversation and hear from voices in the now, what they're dealing with, how they're thinking through things. And then in this class, I have students for their own leadership skills and, and what do they want to develop? So they actually create leadership action plans. And so I use the, the podcast to, to supplement the reading. We use podcasts in our in-class activities. So uh, we have a whole day of listening activities, and we, so we use those to help with that. I do some meditation in the class, um, and so use podcasts to help with meditation. And then a big piece is the final group project. So when I was developing this course for my first time two years ago, I was actually running at the HRC thinking, what can I do for a final project? I don't want to just have the students write a paper. I want something that's fun and interesting, unique, uh, and get them working together in a way that they enjoy. And since I was listening to podcasts that I decided to incorporate into the class, that what if I have them create a podcast? And around the same time, uh, the Center for Academic Technology announced a grant to help us with technology needs in our classrooms, which I applied for, and I'll let Megan speak more about. But um, that was just like a beautiful alignment at that time. And so one of the other challenges I was faced with that semester was what text do I include throughout the semester? How many books do I actually have them read in the time that we have? So with this final project, it was another way to get the students to read another leadership book. So I had them in groups of three. So I had 12 students, four groups of three. They had to collectively choose a book for each group that they were going to then read and discuss in a book club format in their podcast. Um, and they had to tie it back to lessons learned throughout the semester. If they wanted to, they could interview somebody from the field to be part of the conversation. And they had to then create a 15 to 20 minute um, podcast that they turned in by the final class meeting time. I had a rubric that I critiqued them all on, but then actually they each had to listen to each other's podcasts and critique each other. We then met during our final assigned time to actually just talk through the whole process, what they experienced, what they enjoyed, what was challenging, um, and to give feedback to each other. And it was a wonderful, very fruitful experience, which I'll talk more about. Um, but with the Center for Academic Technology, we have this wonderful sound booth on campus. Uh, during COVID times, not so much, but non-COVID times, it's available to our students. And Megan, do you want to talk any more about the, the resources that you all can provide? Absolutely. So um, to circle back to what Brenda was talking about with the grant opportunity, you know, coinciding with her treadmill epiphany about her final project, <laughs> um, the Center for Academic Technology uh, for the last uh, few years has offered an academic technology and innovation grant, which can provide uh, not only a small financial stipend for faculty, but also technical support for projects where they want to introduce students to podcasting and things of that nature. Um, during the time I was helping with Brenda's class, the sound booth was open. Right now it's closed due to COVID and the fact that it's not the most well ventilated space and that the cleaning protocol, we need a little bit more structure around that before we'll reopen. All right, so getting into the workshop. So through Brenda's um, application for the ATIG grant, I became involved with this project and we talked about how did we want to structure this workshop? What kinds of things did we want to emphasize? And the good news here is that if you're thinking about doing this in your class and want to give up some class time to Kat to come in and teach your students, I accomplished all of this in one of Brenda's class sessions. So it's not like you have to sacrifice, you know, four class sessions that you don't have to sacrifice. So some things that I focused on. Number one is the main thing. I wanted to walk away from the session knowing that students knew how to use Audacity at audio recording and editing software to mix their voice with background music and sound effects to create professional grade results. So to do that, there are some things that we worked on. So the first thing is I wanted them to have fun finding music finding music that somehow fit the tone and mood of their podcast. And there's a really great resource for finding Creative Commons licensed music, uh, freemusicarchive.org. So I introduced them to that and kind of walk them through how to interpret the various Creative Commons licenses. And then I also introduced them to the BBC uh, sound effects archive, which uh, their RemArc licensed sound effects that the BBC has thousands of them available for people to use. 
another thing that I focus on during the workshop is mic options and placement. Uh, we have microphones, uh, specifically snowball microphones available for checkout, both in the Center for Academic Technology and at the floor, first floor library desk in Irwin. Um, a lot of times students check out these microphones without knowing a whole lot about them. Snowball microphones proper, not the ice kind of like less expensive version. Um, they have three polar patterns, meaning that they have three ways in which they can pick up sound uh, from different directions. Students need to know the back of the microphone has a switch with three different settings, understand what those settings or polar patterns are so that they'll pick the appropriate one then when they're recording their podcast. So we went over polar patterns or the direction from which a microphone can pick up sound. And we also went over mic placement. In my experience, a lot of students when they first start podcasting have um, are inclined to put the microphone right in front of their face, which is really bad, especially for people like me who um, have poppy P's or plosives or hissy S's, sibilant sounds. So I teach them how to place the mic a little downstream from their, from their mouths in a way so they don't have those plosive and sibilant issues that are so common in audio recordings. And then we go over the editing in Audacity, specifically teaching them how to uh, mix the levels, uh, giving them the ideal level for human voice versus music and having them understand how they put those two things together. And then finally, I teach them how to export their projects to an MP3, which is going to be your most portable uh, platform for sharing audio. And from there, they can either upload it to Panopto or to Google Drive and share it with the instructor. So I do create a Panopto file uh, folder, excuse me, where students can dump their, their final podcast into. Um, and I will say this was a remarkably successful project two years ago. We were doing it again this year. Megan was gracious enough to come back and, and teach the podcasting class to the students. And I'll say for that final project, I scaffold it. So Megan comes and teaches them how to record and edit and, and find music and all of those pieces. Then I have them do, start the project, pick out your book, read it, start discussing it. And then they have to turn in um, an outline of how are they going to talk about things in their podcast. And then uh, two years ago, Megan provided me with the resources from the New York Times of how to teach podcasting in the classroom, and I highly recommend it. And so I take them through a day of listening to podcasts and critiquing them, and there's a whole set of worksheets that the New York Times provided. And so we go through that and get them really listening to the, the, tech, the how do I want to say, the edited piece of it, not just listening to the content, but the, the quality of the podcast. And then um, after the outline, they have to turn in a script, and we talk about how you don't want it to be a verbatim script that this needs to be extemporaneous. And then they record it, they edit it, they turn it in like I talked about and how we went through that process. It was incredibly successful, as I said. Um, what the students said, few things, they appreciated having a new way to share their voices. And they actually would have liked to have had us do this more throughout the semester. One, so that each person would get ex an experience in recording and editing, because as a team, one person tended to take on the editing responsibilities. So this year I have incorporated a pre-assignment where they individually have to create a five minute podcast where they have to record and edit themselves so that they learn all the technology. Um, what they like too is they like some students like writing is not my strength. This really spoke to my strength by allowing me to share my voice in this medium. And so another way, another reason I wanna incorporate more podcasts throughout the semester this year and going forward. Areas for improvement, I should have given them more time. I had Megan come in, I think is around mid to late March. They had about a month to create the podcast and they felt rushed. Um, and so spreading that out more. And again, another reason to have them create individual podcasts earlier in the semester so that the, the editing piece isn't all of a sudden a new big thing to do in April when things are getting crazy for them. So like I said, students loved it, um, suggested doing it more often in the future. Would love to see it incorporated in more classes. I'm teaching again this semester and so far they've been loving the experience. Um, so those are really the lessons learned and areas for improvement. So I'm just going to share about 10 seconds of one of the final podcasts from two years ago. So part of it too is they have to choose a theme and work that theme into how they're talking about the book and especially for their sound effects. So let's take a listen. Um, I'll just do the introduction until they start to talk about the book so you can hear what it's like. Welcome to the Coffee Club with your hosts, Emma Derwin, David Chapman, and Allie Putz. We 
we are talking to you here from Butler University's campus in good old Indiana on April 17th. Now, like every good college student, we have a slight need for something to get us through the days, and that is coffee. So feel free to grab a seat and a coffee with us as we discuss what it's like to be a leader. The book we're talking about today is Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. So you can see they chose a theme, they stuck with it throughout, and then they would edit you know, music in and out throughout the throughout the whole 20 minute podcast. Um, and everyone has to choose a theme and their vibe and set the tone. So that's my experience with podcasting in the classroom. And I really want to thank Megan. It's been a really wonderful experience. It's been a lot of fun and something I definitely plan to continue building, not just in this class, but other ones going forward. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Megan or myself. Happy to talk about how I incorporate them more into my classes. And I know Megan's a wonderful expert on how to actually do the podcasting and teach the podcasting. So reach out and thanks for watching our video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.